The world is weird. And or wonderful. Oh, I'm taking my curious little pal Ryan Bergara around to explore every last little bit of it. Where are we today, shady boy? We're at the Los Angeles Breakfast Club. Los Feliz, California. Founded in 1924 by a group of chatty entrepreneurial equestrians, the Los Angeles Breakfast Club was the social club for the kind of person who was fed up with being in social clubs. And for nearly a century, the club has convened on a weekly basis here in the Friendship Auditorium, where they swap tales, meet new friends, and scarf down a bountiful breakfast. Now before we get to our square meals, a special thanks to Squarespace for sponsoring today's episode. Hey, need a website? Squarespace! Obviously. Now, on to the ham and eggs. My colleague and I met up at the Friendship Auditorium one funny sunny morning and were immediately swept up into a world of breakfast-based ritual as we learned the secret handshake. Cool. After adhering some very official name tags, we caught up with Phil Lairness, who was more than happy to give us the skinny. So, uh, Phil. Yes, Phil. Shane, Ryan. <laughs> thank you for having us here. Oh, Friends thank you club. for being here. Thank you for dressing like you're a professor with I'm, a secret. Well, that's that's or, my overall vibe. He I also think. does look like Jack Torrance. We are in the Shining kind uh, of environment. Okay. That's true. Shining is good. Breakfast Club has been described as a prairie home companion as directed by David Lynch. Oh, I love that. That's gorgeous. Yeah, that's a good. gorgeous that's description. Good. So the club initially started out as sort of a way to buck the tradition of clubs, right? Yeah, and what they create is this ritual of not being able to take yourself seriously. Yeah, which I respect. But within 10 years, it's the organization in LA that anyone who's anyone has to be a member that's of. That's kind of funny how that works out. Uh, you, you die a, a hero or you live long enough to see yourself uh, what does Two-Face say? Well, you somehow say? butchered a two-sentence saying. What does Two-Face say? You either die here or you live long enough to see yourself become the villain. There's a lot of talk about death in, in my interview all of a sudden. I apologize. I I'm made very uncomfortable I apologize. By this. With little time to lose, we set on our way to the buffet. But as you'd expect at a place called the Friendship Auditorium, we took maybe five steps before we were intercepted by Donna. You'll love Donna. We have so much fun here with different people coming. Producers, writers, a lot of creative people are here. I painted cartoons in the 70s, so that's my thing. That's incredible. And yeah, Scooby-Doo. Oh! And all that. There's just so much talent in this room and such beautiful people. I love it. And you've only been coming here a couple of years and you've already made some fast Oh yeah, we're out together all the time. You have a wonderful buffet breakfast. You sit down with friends you've known for a while or friends you're meeting for the very first time. No one here has a breakfast with strangers. That's a guiding principle of the club. It's hard to make friends in a big city is what I've done. I moved it here is. from Chicago. I only made one friend and my girlfriend. So that's well, two. Well, you can't say that Two now. friends. You well, friends. now I got three. With Donna's welcoming words ringing in our hearts, we descended upon the panoply of breakfast booty. I have a real problem when it comes to buffets, so does my colleague. We're sick, sick in a way you can't fix. Look at that pile of bacon. Oh, I can't wait to stuff myself silly. Oh boy, oh boy, oh boy, oh boy, oh boy. Think of my body as like a giant water balloon, and I'm gonna pack it full of food and pastries you know, we and don't eggs have to do this and every bacon single time. until I burst like a Rorschach blot on the canvas of life. Moderation is key, I think. Well, there's cake here. I don't like cake. The frosting makes my stomach hurt. I get a little... Oh, suddenly you're backtracking, huh? Well, because cake, the frosting oh, makes no. my tummy hurt. I understand. Also, I don't really like ham. Careful, buddy. The sausage almost got away from you there. It did. Almost lost your sausage. That happens to me every day. <laughs> Wait, what? Morning. Morning. It's our Morning. first time. Welcome. Oh, welcome. Oh, thank, thank you. For, you. Thank I love you your hats. I've heard good things about the rooster. Donna has told us that the rooster table is where to be. Oh, Donna, oh you're right on the money. Yeah. Okay. Have you guys frequented the rooster table? We are the rooster table. You're the rooster oh, table. Hell yeah. I'm Shane. This is Ryan. Oh, sorry. Yeah, I keep oh, forgetting no, 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 no. the handshake. No, do the handshake. I'm doing the handshake. I was going like to do it. Hi, nice to meet you. After sitting down and saying hello to many more people, we settled in for the festivities, which began promptly. Announcements, funny folks, applause, exactly what you'd hope for while comfortably sitting back and shoveling eggs into your gaping maw. Happy birthday, breakfast lovers, and I have to say this morning that it took Lily, Phil, and I to keep Richard from wearing his birthday suit. Please welcome to the podium your master of ceremonies and our favorite animator, Mr. Richard Gilson. Yeah, I'm only 88, and you're 95. 
Then, in what would be the first of many participatory exercises, we as newcomers were involved in the introductions contest in which people are uh, introduced. So, we were introduced. Uh, uh, Brian's hobbies include a love of the Los Angeles Lakers. Uh, he creates, well, as you can see, cultural documentaries. Uh, uh, oh, and he acts. Uh, next, uh, we have Shane. Uh, if you would please uh, stand to uh, He has a wonderful kitty who makes him smile every day. Uh, he is a peripatetic philosopher practicing walking meditation. Uh, and he's also a producer, director, and writer of documentary films. Thank you so much. And now, the moment you've all been waiting for, where Richard Hilton uses no judging criteria whatsoever to decide the winning table. Apparently, we weren't introduced well enough because we didn't win the contest. But it's not about winning. It's about breakfast and friendship. So whatever. I didn't like that stupid contest anyway. We got up to meet more people. The diversity of membership, especially the diversity in ages. We have members who are 18 years old, members who are older than the club itself. Where else do you go to see such a free and easy mingling across generations where everyone is a peer to each other? And I can't think of it. Our generation, when there's groups of people who have something in common, it's online and forums or things like that. It's nicer to be more present and, and talk in person with people. Well, and to get to explore the art of conversation. Yes. As opposed to the art of written communication. I love the soup, by the way. Thank you. Corduroy. It's about more than eating and greeting, though, as Phil explains. After about a half hour, we do calisthenics. It is a curious combination, eating to the point of combustion, but also moving your body in a way that is entirely alien to a slovenly hog like myself, but I do recommend it, especially in a room full of people wearing pleasant hats and nice slacks. Oh look, now we're doing a different kind of funny dance. A couple of jazzy fellas, I guess. Whoa, look, look at that lady really getting into it. I guess everybody's kind of enjoying it, but that lady especially, dang. I've never got it. Hey! I nailed it on that last one. And then, faster than you can flip an omelet, the lights were doused and the hall was filled with the thunderous sounds of a piano as everyone launched into the spirited howling of breakfast sing-alongs. I feel invigorated. Oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> oh boy. What's, what's happening now? See, see, see. Oh, why are you angry at me? Ever since I left over, I thought the boat would go over. But here, oh dear, dear, I'm really sort of feeling in me. I thought it's the score. I shall say, I want more to the sea. See, see. Willy Wonk on the boat. <laughs> Lunacy. Bliss. Breakfast. Also, cake, I guess. Oh my. That is a large cake. I love the smell of the cake. Just can't eat it. Why can't you eat cake? The frosting upsets my little tummy. I've seen you eat like a garbage can full of, of just garbage. A garbage can full of garbage. That's it's early, very early in the morning. How long did it take you to come up with that one? <laughs> so good. And now, the birthday boy, Maurice Tarangio, will lead us through the mysteries of the cryptogram. Hell yeah, all right, now it's time for the cult stuff. I mean, just kidding, kinda. Anyway, this is the Breakfast Club's famous cryptogram. See if you can crack it here, and if not, don't worry, we'll explain. Okay, let's go for it. Hypnotized like the Winter Soldier right now? You are. Wait till you see what you're going to be doing. Like, I just 
just got activated. Have we any ham? Yes, we have ham. Have we any eggs? Yes, we have eggs. Oh, I see. I, I get it. I just want to keep. I want to hear you say the rest. We have ham and eggs. Shortly after I'd become a member, or just before that, I was at the farmers market in Los Feliz. Yeah. Some man that I'd never seen before went up to his companion, looked in the bag, and said, "F V N E X, S V F X." Yeah. And, you know, my mouth is agape, and hers is too. <laughs> and she asks, what the heck are you talking about? And he says, oh, it's something my father listened to every week. Because The Breakfast Club was, at one time, the longest running radio show anywhere in the world. Uh, oh Warner Brothers Radio in the late oh. 1920s started broadcasting the meetings nationwide. So what you're saying is the best approach now that we'll have been to one meeting is to every stranger we see on the street whisper, F U N E X. No, don't start with F U. Yeah, I was about to say yeah, maybe no, not. Start F, -A -V. F V. Sorry, F V. <laughs> Physical exertion done and over with. We sputtered through some historical club trivia. We knew none of the answers because, um, you know, we'd never been here. What did Maurice Demond do for a living? He was, he was a painter. He was a painter. A banker. He was a banker. Juliet Beach. He was not a lawyer. That cost you three points. Oh, obviously a painter. He was not a college professor! He had a shop I downtown on Broadway. Maurice Dumont, the founder of the club, you should all be ashamed of yourself. <laughs> <laughs> there is a hidden compartment on the back, in the back. Like a magic tree. What is it good. supposed to go stuff. in the hidden compartment? <laughs> yes, sir! The hidden object. <laughs> Can we be less specific? <laughs> anybody? Anybody? Carol? That's a real thing that is not in there, so let's give her three quarters of a point. Don't frown, Carol. That's costing them a point. <laughs> Carol, frown. Frown, Carol. I love this. This is like, whose line is it anyway? What's actually inside the pyramid? That's his I know. Bones. Bones. Kinky but wrong. <laughs> Nothing is the right answer. Five points. Our winning table, right, uh, is the Conrad Monty smoking section. So as you welcome into your midst, rocking horse ham. You know, that horse could have been ours. We didn't know any of the answers. Whose fault is that? I mean, both of us, I guess. Yeah, before we started filming, Shane said, I don't need to know history, I am history. What do you mean by that? I mean, I am history. That sounds bad, like I'm gonna die. I was never very religious growing up, but I sort of understand what church is. This is, this is church to me. I didn't know that I had a hunger for anything yeah. like that. Yeah. Until I was here once a week, early in the morning, with a hundred other Angelinos to be brought closer to the nourishing truth of what it means to be a human being and what it means to be living in this city yeah. in particular. And to cap things off, poetry, aw. First is about breakfast. Sorry, I spilled it. The ham's on your pillow, the eggs in your sheet, the bran muffins rolling down under your feet. There's milk in the mattress and juice on the spread. Well, you said that you wanted your breakfast in bed. <laughs> and of course, what our club is actually about, friendship. I will not play at tug of war. I'd rather play at hug of war where everyone hugs instead of tugs, where everyone giggles and rolls on the rug, where everyone kisses and everyone grins and everyone cuddles and everyone wins. Aww. Nice way to wrap it up. I love this sense of people. And that about did it for our maiden voyage with the Los Angeles Breakfast Club. Let's enjoy some parting words and then bring this puppy on home. See you next Wednesday, March 11th, when we welcome SpongeBob head writer Stephen Banks. Lovely. Well, a lovely ceremony. A lovely ceremony. I had so much fun. I had a lot of fun. I am very full right now. Yeah. <laughs> I am sedate. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you guys. Thank you. Nice to meet you. Oh yeah, well, we'll oh, yeah, yeah, there. Yeah, 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 there we go. Bye. Oh, what is there you go. Thank you. I hope you come Thank back. You. It was so much fun nice having you. Nice to meet you. you. Thank you for yeah. shepherding Thank you, Donna. us. Okay, I know Thank the you. weather's different up there. Are you yeah, eating the lemons? She gave us lemons. to see what they do with it. <laughs>
I make lemonade. Lemons to remember is why. Yeah. What'd you think of that? LA Breakfast Club. <laughs> okay. <sighs> Somebody had a lot of bacon. That was nice. It's nice to walk into a, a room full of people who you don't know and uh, make some friends. That's true, you can go to any sort of club, but a club that is specifically focused around being friends, it's a nice thing to, to visit. If I talk to a stranger the way I talk to strangers in there, I'd probably be in handcuffs at five minutes. Well, you're a weirdo. If you too are looking for friends and happen to be in Los Angeles on a sunny Wednesday morning, stop on by the Friendship Auditorium here in sunny uh, Los Angeles. Oh, I thought you were gonna go, if you're ever looking for friends in the sunny town of Los Angeles on a Wednesday morning, may I recommend Ryan Bergara. The Shrine of Friendship oh. <laughs> is above your head, <laughs> man. I thought you were saying, oh, give Ryan a call. He'll come hang out with you. Yeah. Did we get an answer on the lemons? Is this a riddle? I don't know. I'm going to eat it. Yeah, me too. I love lemons. Me too. Don't we'll do see that. you next week. <laughs> As we said up top, this episode was sponsored by Squarespace. Hey, do you need to set up a website or an online store? Well, we did, and Squarespace made it easy. With their handy marketing tools and analytics, it really is an all-in-one platform for building a beautiful online presence like the one you see before you. You can use their traffic overview tools to track overall visits, unique visitors, and page views. Swing on by squarespace.com for a free trial, and when you're ready to launch, go to squarespace.com watcher to save 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain.